Do you think that civilization that built the pyramids, the builders, do you think they somehow found a way off the planet? <laughs> um, Here's the uh, easy window for people to discredit you. <laughs> <laughs> can't trust him. He can't believes in aliens. No, no. Well, so so I, I would not put it out of the realm of possibility. And I know this gets into another topic that you're interested in, which is the moon. Yes. Because, you know, I, I wouldn't, I can't discount it. Like, I just think that, you know, it's possible that there was a split at some point in the past that some people split and, and mm. who knows where they went. Um, you can't rule it out. Like a, a, along the the length of time in the universe and the distance of space, like there's all these things are, are very possible, but in terms of our civilization, sure, within the last hundred, several hundred thousands of years, it's, we could have developed to a point where, yeah, that, that type of transport and, 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 and um, travel was possible and, it's, and it was just wiped out. Like again, it's 100,000, if we, our civilization was gone 100,000 years later, there'd be nothing left. We just wouldn't know. There'd be no, nothing left, it'd barely even be, I could imagine even much of around Mount Rushmore, there'd be some of it left, I guess. But in a hundred thousand years, who knows what would be left? Yeah, it's hard to you can't rule it out. Well, I think Randall said that um, if we were there were to be some sort of cataclysm now, he said it would take, I think, less than five hundred years for there to be absolutely no evidence of like the Empire State Building, for example. Yeah, yep. it would just be, it would be nothing, yep. dust. Yep. Yeah, very little left, and then yes, this slow erosion and process of time for for after that to to get rid of the few stone things that we did make. Mm. Yeah, the Hoover Dams and the Mount Rushmores. But yeah, for, in terms of our specific tech, our civilization, yeah, gone in centuries. So, like, if you look at the depicted version of what like aliens look like with the big heads and the yeah. little arms, like you would think that that would be us in could be. the future. So, yeah. could that have been like? If if the civilization that we used to be before the younger Dryas had advanced to the level where they could move massive stones like that and create objects like this, and it was uninterrupted by a cataclysm, it seems like that's where we would end up. Yeah, I think our uh, long term um, solution for and, and survival depends on our ability to ultimately get off the planet. Mm -hmm. um, and that would drive our evolution 100%. You spend time, I mean, it's not, it wouldn't be easy. Maybe uh, not even get off the planet. I'm not even saying like get off the planet, but maybe e like to evolve and to become a better, to become a better species that doesn't want to, you know, fight over land yeah. and kill each other for resources. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we'd have to get rid of our genitals, our reproductive organs, and we wouldn't have to think, use that part of our brain anymore. We wouldn't think that way anymore. Yep. We'd only think logically. We think like machines. Yep. Get rid of, yep. Get rid of all the emotion and the, yeah. our frontal cortex being uh, our, like, uh, our, uh, what is it? Our, uh, point, our, get our emotional centers in our brains being a little too big. It was a Christopher Hitchens quote that I love on that. Our, our, that he, he gets into. But yeah, I don't think we're the, we're not the end result of evolution. That's not going to stop. And maybe our role here is, is really just to give birth to the next phase of human evolution to like birth, whether it's, it's could be AI generated. It could be some hybrid transhumanism type of thing that, that gets us to that space. But it does, you know, there's a, there's a good line from the expanse. I love that, that show and those books, but it's like, at one point, the I think Miller, the detective, he was he was questioning whether or not the the universe really wants us out there. Like, if we we actually would be any good for for the rest of the universe if we got out there, given how warlike and crazy we are as a as a species, the stupid stuff we get up to. I do think, yeah, it seems like that's the if if we were to continue to evolve and to get to that point, then yeah, maybe that's that's the type of thing it would be. It would be either using artificial means to to limit our emotional response to stuff and our, our what is effectively human nature, the tribal instinct to the us and the mm -hmm. them. And, and this, you know, we have these, these vestiges of our, our, our past that are still part of us and part of our culture today. And a lot of these elements of society moves forward at a much faster rate than, than we ourselves can sort of do internally and mm -hmm. with our instincts and stuff. Right. So yeah, maybe, maybe, it's, That's the answer. It seems more probable that it's us than something from a distant galaxy, like could, thousands of light years away. Could be us. Could be us from the past. Could be us from the future. You know, from the future, right? Yeah, yeah. It could be us, like the whole UFO from the past, phenomenon. which could also be, be the, the future. future. When you're able to travel, to traverse time, I think the 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 lineage, the yep. linear 
thing of uh, aspect of time disappears. Like yeah, the faster it's you like go, that movie, any, everything, everywhere, all at once. Yep, that just came out. Yeah, the faster you go, the less, the less, the slower time passes. Right. So yeah, you could spend, you could spend millions of years in our time zipping back and forth, and only a short amount of time in yours, or, or the opposite. Right. In a lot of ways. So yeah, I don't know. It's it could be. That's I. I think there's unlimited mystery and and <clears throat> and and speculation you can make on some of these things. Um, but yeah, for sure, there's. I think our our current version of of history is really limited and just book ended, and it's probably time that we changed it. You know, mm. opened up our minds a little bit to some other possibilities because that's that's honestly where I think is one of the things that drew me in is it's that's where science has taken us. Like we we know from a lot of these other adjacent fields of science that some other stuff has happened and it should be affecting our view of history. And of our our role, maybe our role here on the planet as a species too. That's one of the things I, I wrapped up Randall's podcast with was I was talking to him about like what do we do? Like what do we do to preserve our our technology, our species, whatever? Like if we do end up in a Noah's Ark situation, like what do we do to preserve what we have right now? Because hard drives aren't going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> let's build a monument on the moon to start moon. with. Let's, right. <laughs> let's go to the moon. Let's, let's get an outpost on the moon just as a first fallback safety measure. Yeah. And then figure out Mars and everywhere else. Like, yeah, ultimately, long term, we have to get off the planet. Like, it's the the cosmic shooting gallery analogy, right? It's, it's, it's whether or not it's our destiny as a species, I don't know. But if if that's what we want it to be, then we do have to get off the planet. And I, that's why I think this stuff's important. Like, the fact that if more people realize that that we've been through cataclysms, that we're so vulnerable as a civilization and as a species, for that matter that it might incur and if that was encoded into the zeitgeist and the just the consciousness of humanity itself because we taught everybody that message from an early age then maybe maybe there'd be a way to change our priorities spend a little less money on tanks and bullets maybe a little bit money more money on on collaborative space exploration and yeah. you know bending out because we're at a very unique point in our evolution like we're it's such a fragile civilization, like another a rock from space could end it, super volcano could end it. But we're at a point now where we actually have the ability to address some of these issues. We can we can really make headway on some of these challenges. And this this opportunity may not last forever, but we should I think we don't do the best job of sort of grasping those opportunities as a species and and trying to really drive that thing forward. Cause yeah, ultimately it's like the long-term solution and, and survival of our species depends on us eventually getting off the planet, like mm. spreading out, not event, not always leaving or anything, but, but we should be spreading out. Like that's, that should be, a, in my opinion, a higher priority than it currently is. Mm. Yeah. What do you think about us getting our technology somehow onto the moon <laughs> for future, just in case as like a fail safe? I think it's a great idea. I think we should be going back to the moon. Or getting to I don't you think it's weird. Like even Elon Musk doesn't even talk about the moon. Yeah, I don't understand it. I honestly, it seems like it's like stop the Mars stuff. Let's 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 test this stuff. And in fact, the moon makes so much more sense to establish an outpost there because that that is a far more efficient location for launching like intrasolar missions. You don't have to fight gravity. You you just like you get stuff right. to the moon. You can put together a mission that goes to Mars with much, much less resources than mm -hmm. than do it. You can test all of your systems. We, we're close enough where you can rescue people. Maybe um, I've seen the movie with Brad Pitt. Uh, yeah, where his dad works on a, a spaceship that's like kind of, off of Saturn. Yeah, I believe. one of the moons of like Titan or Europa. No, he was on Neptune. Neptune. Oh, his, that's right. His Wait, dad was doing research on yeah, Neptune, yeah. and he had to. They had to go. He went to the moon, and then he launched a rocket off the moon yeah. to get to Mars. That's how you would do. It. I think that's the long and most. That's what we would do. You'd launch it off the moon. You just don't have to don't have to overcome that much gravity. Spend that much fuel trying to do it. Um, it seems yeah. so weird. Why are we like glossing know. right over the moon? But well, we're supposed to go back, right? Was it what's the name of the Artemis, the moon missions that are supposed to go back soon? I can't remember sure. when, but I, I really hope we do. Like I, I think the moon's the place to go. Like that's like step one. Mars is great and all, but like let's go to the moon. Like the moon. The moon's a place to really establish an outpost, I think, first. And then and then uh, you know, really that's becomes the launching pad for everything else.